Hey there everybody. Um, today we are going to be going over the second chapter of Black Colossus by Robert E. Howard. Um, which is um, in the timeline the first Conan story which um, takes us from Conan just being like a thief and a cutthroat to a commander, we'll say. So if you recall um, from the first chapter, um, our little um, preface there, we had um, this dude breaking into this um, ancient temple and seeing something terrifying um, and now, and now, what's going on, um, when this opens up, Robert E. Howard goes through and gives us, like, a, almost like a geographical, um, history lesson of all the things that are going on. And there is some dude named Nautok that is, um, collecting, let's say, and bringing together all of the desert nomad tribes and armies, um, and just trying to, like, take over and, um, going after, um, Stygia and Shem and all this stuff. So we know that's happening now. Um, and now in, um, Karaja, there is a princess there named Yasmela, and she is um, ruling Karaja right now because her brother, who should be in charge, is um, being held hostage by Ophir um, and Map and all this other stuff I'll show you. Um, so... Their army is really small, and um, the majority of it is um, mercenaries that they've hired. And now Ophir wants to ransom the brother back to Karaja, but if they do that, they won't have enough money to pay the mercenaries. And if they don't have enough money to pay the mercenaries, this new um, army that's coming from the south will destroy them. So, um, Yasmela is in a bit of a pickle here. And um, this opens this bit where she's laying on the floor dreaming. Um, and all of her maidens are like, strewn around sleeping or whatever. And this black cloud basically shows up and starts talking to her, saying that it is um, the Veiled One, um, Natok, and that um, he's coming for her, and she is going to be his queen when he takes over the world and all this other stuff. And, um, so she's terrified. She wakes up screaming. Her maidens come to her and she kind of explains what's going on. And, um, they're like, you need to talk to Mitra. And she's like, oh, I thought that was like a dead God. Like, from a dead religion they're like no 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 and she's like well I've been asking Ishtar for help and not getting it so I'll try your Mitra the servants take her down to the shrine they have set up there for Mitra that they say is basically set up for um, when affluent travelers come and stay at the palace they have a place to worship. Um, and she just goes and talks to Mitra and 
um, Mitra answers and says, go out into the street and find the first man you see and make him the leader of your army. And she's like, all right, cool, whatever. And so she's like, that's what I'm going to do. No one can stop me. And she goes, she like puts a cloak on so no one can see who she really is. And, um, she's running out in the streets and bumps into some angry drunk. And, um, the angry drunk is Conan. And, um, he's like trying to like get a good look at her under her cloak. And she's like, knock it off. Stop it. Stop touching me. And he's like, come on. And she's like, no, look, hey, come with me. And he's like, all right, whatever. And he thinks she's going to rob him or take him to get robbed. So he's on his guard. But she takes him to the palace. And he's like, oh, so you're like a maiden waiting, huh? You know, like, oh, okay. Like he's been there before. And um, she takes him in. And there's some wine on the table, and he grabs it and starts drinking. And then one of the handmaidens comes in, and she's like, Princess, Princess. And he's like, Princess. And he, like, throws the wine bottle down and, like, pulls his sword out because he thinks he's being set up for some shit. Um, and she sits him down, and she's like, Look, like, no, no, no. Like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. And she basically tells him, like, I talked to Mitra. He said to find somebody, and you're the first person I found. And he's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And um, when she starts talking to him about, like, his qualifications, let's say, we get a lot of backstory on Conan here. So, like, um, he was born on the battlefield. The first sounds he heard were... Um, the clanging of steel together and the cries of the dead and um, all this stuff and how he was um, warring in Corinthia before he was here. and um, So it gives us a little more um, timeline, backstory, um, where he's been, what he's done and all this, um, and then she's like, to the servant, she's like, go get, like, all the dudes, like, the important dudes, you know, bring them in here, and this is really funny, because, like, um, <laughs> she freaking hides Conan behind a drape, and so she has, like, the general and, like, some religious dude and, um, I don't know, just, like, a bunch of the important people that she talks to, um, like her cabinet, let's say. And, um, she's like, okay, um, well, this is now going to be the commander of your army. And she goes, Whoosh! And pulls the drape open, and Conan's sitting there with his feet up on a table, eating this big beef bone. And, um, he's like, huh? And they're like, what? And, um, Almeric, who's the general, is like, Conan, the cutthroat? I would have hanged him if he wasn't such a good swordsman, and all this stuff. And, like, everyone's like, he's, he's like a savage. Like, you can't let him, like, like, you can't have gentlemen, um, like, underneath him. Like, this is ludicrous, you know? And she's like, well, then get the F out of here. Like, you could go to hell or go to Koth, do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. And they're like, oh, no, 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 And she's like, and they're like, yeah, I guess. Um, and the she has the servants go get, like, the commander's armor. And then for some ridiculous reason, again, he goes behind a curtain, and they put him in this, like, king commander armor. And when he comes out, like, all of them are like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, like, 
totally. Like, you you look more, like, kingly in that than kings that I've seen and all this other stuff. And then this is where Conan, like, has this, like, vision of, um, oh, maybe I should be a king kind of thing. And um, so this is kind of important because, like, to the readers of Weird Tales, like, just within the last few months, they've been reading stories where he was already king. So this is kind of like a cool um, moment for the continual readers of the magazine. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And um, that is where this chapter ends. And um, I guess next we're going to do is have some freaking Warren going on now that Conan's in charge. So um, let me know how much you're liking Black Colossus. Again, if you haven't read um, Black Colossus, um, it's available pretty much everywhere. If you want to read the chapter that I'm talking about right now, click the link down below, go to Weird Mask, and you could read um, just this chapter. So you could follow along. And, um, yeah. So um, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you later.